thank you for joining me. This video is about an introduction to MoTeC. So I thought as a little intro we might uh, capture a couple of laps around uh, 2020 Zandvoort in my lovely Judge Duty Free Britney Sim Racers Performance Guide skin in my FSR 2021 car. And we've been doing a lot of laps at uh, Zandvoort this week to prepare for FSR test races, testing the mod, etc. But it's also led to a fair bit of MoTeC logging and a lot of conversations about MoTeC, not just from people who've bought the Sim Racers Performance Guide or inquired about it, but just in forums and even in my new team in FSR. There's a lot of uh, thirst for knowledge about what MoTeC does for us, how to use it, how to interpret it. So today's video is uh, really just about that. It's about the basics of MoTeC, what you can expect to to deduce from MoTeC, or what uh, what information it gives you, how to use that information. And today's session is really about an introduction. So the basics, um, basic introductory uh, parts of MoTeC. That most of it is stuff you might look at in your initial roughing in of a new car on a new track. But then we delve a little bit into observing changes in long stint uh, tire performance based on moving a car from say understeer to uh, to a more balanced setup. So if that's something that's of interest to you, uh, please uh, come along for the ride. So one of the first uh, ports of call when uh, looking at a MoTeC log file for a new car on a new track is to have a look at ride height in the suspension area. And I've circled in yellow here two interesting parts where the red and blue traces, uh, they are the front suspension positions or, or the ride height and we can see here that the front uh, suspension is going below minimums uh, and those spots are Eau Rouge and Blanchimont. This is a car that runs a fair bit of wing. This is actually last year's FSR car which I was using to sharpen up a bit before the new mod came out. So this car has a lot of wing and as such at high speed there's a lot of pressure trying to squish the car onto the road and it's getting the nose right onto the road and we don't know what impact that's having yet until we deal with it so we're going to add a little bit of uh, front third spring packer and see what that does for us. So I went for third spring packers because it was really um, a ride height issue born of uh, downforce rather than anything that's particularly happening in mid corner and uh, you can see here the difference uh, the red and blue traces which are the front suspension positions are now off the floor and that was the uh, that's the, uh, the outcome we were hoping to find when we came back in and looked at it. So now why don't we have a look at a comparative slide, uh, looking at the previous one and this one overlaid, and that's going to give us some really interesting detail. So this is the comparative slide where we've overlaid the two, and you can see there that there's a massive difference in speed. The third yellow circle from the right, that's 25 kilometers an hour, and there was absolutely no change to aero. I want to emphasize that. We did do a couple of other subtle little tweaks, which I'm going to deal with in a minute, which was brake cooling and dampers, which helped us with a bit of grip through Eau Rouge. But the car's um, innate speed was significantly increased, and you can see here the red circle is the comparative uh, vehicle speed uh, traces through Eau Rouge and up the Camel Strait. So getting the belly of the car off the deck has made a massive difference and Motex showed us we've achieved that. Now a little bit more of an advanced observation here but sticking with the theme of suspension, the, uh, the white lines were from that first lap and the fast bump dampers were backed off totally so we had essentially undamped suspension. In the Sim Racers Performance Guide I use an analogy that it's a bit like watching an apparatus in a child's play park swinging around totally undamped and you can see the extreme amount of suspension velocity occurring in, the, in that left hand yellow circle but even in the right hand yellow circle and that's just travelling along Camel Strait, big difference occurring in how the suspension's damped. Now I use a fixed scale on the left hand side and I just have a bit of a gut feel as to what sort of suspension velocity I'm looking for because undamped and high velocities means the tyre isn't touching the road. Overdamped means that the tyre is not able to move enough. So that's a little bit more art than science. Okay on to the brake slide and we're looking here at brake cooling and that's a pretty easy call to make really. You should be aware of what the maximum efficiency of your uh, or maximum temperature that your brakes will offer efficient uh, retardation 
and work within that but here at SPA it's very easy on brakes and you can see here that we've made a change and we've got uh, higher brake disc temps but uh, the benefit of that is we've got more efficiency uh, for most of the lap and also less drag so that reduction in brake cooling actually netted us more lap time. Okay well looking at and interpreting what's going on with tyres and how that relates to your setup and your performance is going to be a major part of your interaction with MoTeC and now we're going to get into the area of tyres. So this slide is, a, is almost a fantasy slide where we've got a perfectly balanced car set up that's generating similar amounts of heat front and rear over a lap and um, I can't remember what car or what track this was but it's a rare beast indeed and in a moment we'll then we'll get on to a bit more analysis of what, what you can deduce from looking at your tyre information. So this next slide uh, you can see the red area that I've circled and we've overlaid now uh, two laps at the same track with a, a change to set up and we're observing the difference that that's made uh, to the tyre temperature traces. The um, later traces are the colour ones and the comparative trace is the white one and you can see here that we're getting a much lower temperature spike at that particular part of the track. So they're the sort of differences that you're looking for when you make changes. Did the tyre heat up more? Did it heat up less? Uh, did I get differences from front to rear? We'll go into that in a bit more detail in long run slides in a minute but that's overlaid tyre temp data. You've got seven uh, data points there to help you understand what exactly is happening to the tyre with regards to camber etc. Now this next slide is an interesting one because it's about um, a long run stint of 14 laps at Zandvoort and you can see the red and blue traces there, the front two front tyres and that is an understeering setup. The fronts are sliding and heating and wearing a whole lot more than the rears and that is going to get very very slow at the end of the stint where I think we had 48% left on the front left tyre at the end of a 14 lap run. I've marked the delta there clearly in the yellow but that is what a badly understeery setup looks like and we need to set about solving that if we want to have long stint performance by not destroying our front tyres. So we made some changes and went out again and this is one of those uh, screens where you look at it and go hallelujah. So we've had a couple of massive wins here. Number one the front rear delta has been drastically reduced and you can see the differences there. Uh, but also the front left to front right delta has been massively reduced. You can see the red and blue lines are traveling almost together there whereas before it was, there was a really big spread left to right at the front but, uh, and now we don't have that and we've got the rear, the rear wear has increased slightly so we've moved out of such a severe understeering setup and much closer to a, a more neutral setup and the tyre life, <coughs> the relative tyre life towards the end of a stint we're going to have a lot more front tyre to use compared to that first uh, long run test that we did. Now there's, a, now there's a similar story also to be told in this tyre pressure graph which is comparing uh, pressures across those exact same runs and you can see here that the front left uh, ultra high pressure uh, that was occurring along with the wear uh, has been mitigated somewhat and also our pressure spread across all four tyres is a lot less and that's something to aim for. So tyre pressures tell a story and in certainly in R-Factor 2 there is an optimum tyre pressure with regards to performance. You can pit stop for fuel and not change tyres and you'll come back out and your next lap or two are going to be rubbish simply because you haven't brought the tyres back up to optimum pressure yet but yep tyre pressures will tell a story. So we're going to venture ever so lightly and briefly into the, the sexier area of comparative driver performance. Here I'm comparing one of my laps against an, a different one of my laps but if you're driving in a team you can get the fastest guy's MoTeC file and see exactly what he's doing different to you. You see at the top there there's a play button where you can watch it in real time or uh, watch it slowed down and you'll see the steering wheel movements, gear selection, RPM etc and you see yourself going around the track down on the bottom right. But in this particular one we can see the throttle trace. I've made a change and I'm able to get on the throttle more confidently and more smoothly and earlier 
at uh, Eau Rouge. This is in a 911 GT3 at Spa. And then the right hand one, the yellow one, the braking trace, whatever setup change I've made or change of focus has allowed me to brake harder and more confidently at the end of the lap. But driver overlays are fantastic as well. Now this is a fun slide. We're in the driver section with two laps overlaid. And by pressing the F3 button on your keyboard, we get the variance data above. So you can see that whatever change you've made or if you're comparing to another driver, you can find out where the lap time is being won or lost in what sector or what corner and you can understand more succinctly where, you, where, where the changes are, are helping or hurting you. I mean you might have made a specific change to deal with this, a specific part of the track and this is where you see whether or not that's worked or perhaps whether a trade-off is worthwhile where you're losing a bit of time in one section gaining a bit of time in another section but this is where the F3 button uh, shows you the variance in lap time. Thank you very much for joining me on this short tutorial on an introduction to MoTeC. This uh, forms part of the audio visual support series for the Sim Racers Performance Guide. If you found today's tutorial interesting and enjoyable uh, please don't hesitate to watch the rest of the videos and even more so uh, if you do feel like picking up a copy of the 78 page uh, Sim Racers Performance Guide I would equally be thrilled. Look forward to talking to you soon again. Thanks for your time.